what is up you guys welcome back to my youtube channel oh my god we are on part two of childhood trauma we left off when i barely went into the system and i was very emotional and honestly i don't think i'm ready for part two but we're going to get into it because we're getting vulnerable and we're going to talk about things that are uncomfortable to talk about. And um, as hard as it is, this is a way that we can process things in, in a much more healthier manner rather than ignoring them. We're acknowledging that it exists. Okay. Part two. Part two is when I get taken into the system. Um, when I first got taken into the system, now this is where my memory is like extremely like mixed around. So I don't know what first happened because like this is the moment where like my memory fogs and I forget most of what, what's going on. But I do know parts and bits and pieces because my memory completely was like turn off like completely shut off it's like way of captivating to save itself you know your brain has this amazing thing about it that anytime it sees danger or feels like it's in danger it shuts off so in, in order to process things it just forgets and people who deal with a bunch of like trauma have memory issues and that is me Around this time, they took me to a facility. It was a uh, boys and girls. So I had I went to the girls, and they took me to this facility. It had like an elevator or like stairs, and it was like upstairs. And um, I remember only being there for a little bit because they had take me. Then they took me to like um, I don't know if they took me to a foster home. Yeah, a foster home. One of my family members. I'll get into the family member part. Um, I had went into this facility. The only thing I remember about this facility is that I stubbed my toe uh, on a tricycle. And I had got sent to the hospital, which was across the street from the facility. And, like, they gave me this big teddy bear. And, like, my toenail was, like, completely, like, off. And they, like, numbed it with the needle or everything. Like, it was really gross. It was very graphic. And it hurt. <laughs> I, I, I remember that vividly of what how painful that was. And then I was on crutches for like two weeks. And they had like wrapped my left foot up. Um, now, the very first foster parent, I think, was my aunt. My aunt had took me in and... Um, she didn't want to take me in. She went to church all the time at the time. And um, she had two daughters. And I just felt so alone. Like I didn't belong in this house, you know, like so different from them. Because they grew up with a different cultural like background, you know, the way that we're being raised. And um, I just didn't feel like I fit in. Um, I was very jealous of my cousin because she had both parents and so I would like bully her basically and I always felt like like she always thought that she was better than me or that's how I felt at that age and so I constantly just wanted to bully her because I felt insecure about myself and so her stepdad I think was it her stepdad yeah her stepdad would spank me um, whenever I would like, you know, beat up my cousin. And so eventually they just got tired of my behavioral issues. So they're like, we can't do this anymore. So they sent me away. And then I got into another person's house. She was a cousin. This house that I got sent to was very traumatizing. Um, I don't know how to explain it without being censored on YouTube, but I 
felt very uncomfortable in this house, if you know what I'm saying. It was a woman. Um, she would make me do things in front of her that I didn't want to do. And she would make me feel very uncomfortable. I was eight years old. Or seven. I think I was seven or eight. I think I was in third grade, I believe. Or second grade. I'm not sure. But it was around this time where she would force me to shower in front of her. And it, I wouldn't be in the shower. I would be in a kiddie pool. Like a kid's pool. And she would make me shower. Like in the pool with water in it she would make me shower in front of her without my clothes on and I was very like I felt very uncomfortable and I would tell her that I could shower by myself like I didn't need her to watch me and she said no she liked watching me and it was like and then she would like scrub me at times I was I was very uncomfortable um it was very uncomfortable and still to this day I don't know like my mom I don't know if it's like if I call it a, a molest thing or I don't know because it was so like it was weird and it made me feel weird and it made me feel like ugh, you know so I can't really get into that a lot but she was very mean and like like really mean and I got taken from I don't know how it but I got taken away from her house because I guess some stuff happened. I really don't remember what happened. Like my memory blocked out majority of that time while I was with her. The only thing I remember vivid was that part. I don't know if other things happened that she did. I don't remember because my brain blocked that part out of my life. That that whole existence. Only thing I remember is the school that I went to and that ver that one memory and then walking to school. Those are the only three memories I remember while being with her. I don't know how long I was with her. I don't know what went on in the house because I don't remember much of it because my memory blocked it out. So I would definitely love to go through hypnosis. Um, then I got sent to another facility, a boys and girls facility. And then this is where I seen my brother. I was so excited. My There is a, a boys girls facility, um, a tot like a toddler facility and then infant facility. It was, and then they had like a breakfast area where they had fed the kids breakfast and lunch and stuff like that. And I saw my baby brother for the first time after not seeing him for, I don't know how long we were separated. We would just see each other on visits. Um, and I just wanted to go see him all the time. I remember it cause like, this is where my behavior problems got worse. This is where like my behavior problems started escalating and I started getting to more fights. I started picking on other girls and, um, I would I would just get in fights constantly I would yell I would run away this is this is where my behavior issues just got even more worse because just how bad I just wanted to go home and um, they they definitely got me in the psyche veil and they started putting me through therapy and I would just like keep secrets I wouldn't like say everything that was going on I would talk about like things that happened but like not get into it and then I had went to finally, finally, first fo uh, foster home that I absolutely loved um, where I met my foster dad. This man meant a lot to me. He first met me and he was looking for a foster, another foster kid. And uh, he's like, you are the cutest of the bunch. So I just decided to pick you. And I was like, oh. And so I was like at McDonald's and he took me to McDonald's. I think, yeah, McDonald's or Burger King. McDonald's and he was like, I have two surprises for you and I was like what's the surprise and he says um he says he says you guess and I was like you're getting me Heelys because at the time Heelys was a thing and the kids who had Heelys were like very cool and popular and so Heelys had just came out and I was like you're getting me Heelys and he's like yeah that too because my birthday was coming up I was turning nine my birthday was coming up and um he got me Heelys and then he's like, there's another surprise. And I was like, I'm moving in with you. And then he was like, yeah. And I was like, so excited. I was just so happy because, um, you know, like the father thing, I had a broken fatherhood, uh, but fatherhood trauma. And so like, I was so excited. So moved into his house. Um, I didn't stay there that long, but I had so much fun. 
like me and his daughter were getting a fight but i always had the issues with the girls because i was always jealous of of what they had and i didn't have you know like they have a stable father they have a family they have a mom so i always had this jealousy against other girls with family um and then the the so my foster dad and his ex-wife because they're no longer they uh something happened obviously um rp my dad's no longer here um i did talk to him still before after after the whole system we bumped in again but that's just for another story um him and his ex-wife got in an argument at the time it was his wife and it was a huge argument he got locked up uh i'm not gonna go into details about what happened that's just their business and so i got taken away again another foster home this time i got sent to a foster home where abuse was very bad like extremely bad um, I got sent to Mesa. It was a Hispanic family and uh, the culture, you know, like it was definitely there. The things that went down on this home were things that um, you would never want your kid to go through. At the time, um, they started me on medication. I had went through, I do not know how much medication. That's what I absolutely hate about the system is that they feed these kids all types of medication, ADHD, bipolar, da da da. Like you're, the reason why these kids have these anger problems or these issues, you're taken away from their parents. You wonder why they're acting out. Like they miss their family. That's why most of it is like, by the time I went back home and I like started like working on myself, I didn't have any of those issues. I didn't have no anger issues. I didn't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I worked on myself. But. <sighs> this part is where it gets, like, hard. So, they sent me to a one-day hospital. Because I got kicked out of the facility. Because I went back to the facility. Um, and I got... I got sent to a, another foster home, which was far away from the rest of the people that I knew. Um, it was during the winter time, I believe. I don't know how long I was there for. But I do remember that they would have allowances for their kids because they had, they had a son and daughter. They had their own kids. And then they also had a foster kid who had autism and who was nonverbal. This is when I, when I first noticed what other kids, you know, who had nonverbal and who were autistic. Um, it was so sad, the fact that I had to see what I had to see and the things that I had to experience in this home. But when I first got there, I had just a bag, you know, where they would just have kids carry all their stuff in a bag. And um, I had a picture of my mom that I would put under the pillow and I would kiss it every night. And so... Um, this story is, is is really hard to talk about. God, oh my God. We're running out of time here. It's 13 minutes. First gotten home. Everything seemed great. They seemed like an amazing family, and I was excited. Their kids seemed great at the beginning. You know, everybody seems great. And uh, they showed me the house, the laundry room. There was upstairs, downstairs. I had my own bedroom. Um... I had a big mattress to myself, my own closet. And like, they were like really well off financially. So I was just like so happy. I, and they owned their own store in the middle of the desert too. And they had their own store. We would go to their store, we would count money and stuff like that. They owned stuff. And uh, they had a Hummer. I remember what kind of car they have. And I remember that they had a pool in their backyard. We'll get to a story about the pool, but things that went on in this house am i ready to talk about this at first it started with me like seeing how they would treat their foster daughter a girl who had autism and she was nonverbal. um she would wet the bed and anytime she wet the bed they would beat her she would be so scared. I remember this one time where she came in my room 
crying and she was scared and she was like mary or maribel i don't know what they i don't know what she called me but she was like she was like ah you know like you know and she was like crying and i was like what happened and she like grabbed me and she took me to her bed and i was like oh you wet the bed and she's like and then she's like I, you know like she would like go like the i thought the p symbol or like this i don't know but she would like tell me the best that she could and i was like it's okay we don't have to say anything and so i would like strip her bed and um i there was i had new sheets in my bedroom closet i would like put them and i would switch them out and i would give her new sheets and i was like no one has to know you know and um and she would give me a hug and she would smile and then i was like okay go to bed because it was late and um there was one time i went to go use the bathroom and i had to use the bathroom so bad that by the time i pulled my pants down and i sat on the toilet i like did not i missed i did not pee on the toilet and um i peed on the floor and i was like crying because i, I just felt so bad for peeing on the floor um i forgot i forgot that this happened but she had came in the bathroom and she like beat me in the bathroom i won't i won't get specific on details because then i ended up in the shower um i don't remember this lady's name i do remember her husband's name though um and threw me in the shower and she's like, you're disgusting, clean up. And I was, it was like, it was on accident and she like shut the bathroom door and left me in the bathroom. And then went to school. I acted like nothing happened and we continued the day. Then there was a part, I, like I said, my, my memory's broken up through this time frame while I was in the system. It was just a very bad era of my life and I did not want to remember it. Um, there was a time where they drove me to the store and I was like, I don't know if I was like being t t like talking back because you know, if you spoke up for yourself to Hispanic families, that's talking back to them. And they left me in the middle of the desert I don't know for like an hour or two hours or so I don't know how long it was next to a payphone and they told me that little girls like me get taken up and like they, they told me that like we get picked, like somebody like people like uh, girls like me get picked up on the street and like for not behaving and they left me and they they went to their, to their store their store wasn't far away from where they were going because there was a desert part where they went to their store and they left me and they picked me up and they're like, so are you going to behave now? And I was like, so scared. Cause I was like, yeah. Cause I, I was in the middle of the desert by myself. Of course I'm going to be scared. And so never did that again. Never talked back. And again, after that, at, at, well, especially while we were driving. And then there was another part where because I was taking meds. I didn't want to take my meds. I didn't like how they made me feel. I didn't like how like I had to eat a lot. And there's one day. This is where I got this was the last day. This is where I got taken out. There's obviously more stuff happened, but I don't want to get into specific details. I'm only going certain topics I'm willing to talk about. Other things I'm not willing to talk about. There's a lot more things that I'm not willing to talk about. Um We're going, we're going, what is it, almost 20 minutes? Okay, no, no, we're, we'll keep talking, we'll keep talking. <sighs> okay, okay, my mom, it's okay. Um, I didn't want to take my meds that night. I didn't want to take my meds at all. I was like, I don't want to take them. She took her key off, she unlocked the drawer. We were in the kitchen, right? In the kitchen, there's a sliding door where the pool's at. This is where the pool story comes in. And I was like, I don't want to take my meds. She's like, if you don't take your meds, I'm going to have Jaime, that was his name. I'm going to have Jaime throw you in the pool. It was winter time. It was about 30 degrees outside. It was nighttime. These are my night meds. It was nighttime. It was about 30 degrees. I swear to everything I love. 
it was 30 degrees i was so cold and the reason why i remember this is because i just i my body was so stuck i couldn't even breathe um and i was like i don't want to take them and they're like take them i was like i don't want to take them and then so they're like okay you don't want to listen i remember jaime like picking me up over his shoulders and throwing me in the six foot to five foot area in the pool that pool was so cold and so freezing i couldn't even swim i had a doggy paddle i don't know how i made it to the freaking wall because he threw me in the middle of the the pool in the middle of the pool and so i was like like trying to swim i remember i remember like shaking i remember how cold it was and how like i couldn't even breathe i was i, I felt like stuck on air and I tried to like pull myself up and I could barely even get up. And like, I like laid on the floor and then they, like he picked me up and they took me in the house. And she's like, are you ready to listen now? And they took my clothes off and like just stripped me naked in the kitchen. I was nine. They took my clothes off again and I just stood there naked and they put a towel over me. And they're like, so are you going to behave now? And I was like, yes. There was also another time where, oh, no, this is not the time where I got taken. There was another time that I got taken, but I'll put that in part three. It's already 21 minutes. Um, part three will be the time. This is, this was my last foster home. Part three will be the time where I got taken away and how that escalated and it got really, really bad. And the cops got called and I got sent to a mental hospital. So nine years old boom all right you guys we just went from like six or seven to nine the span of me being in the foster system i'm almost out of the foster system um yeah so we'll talk about that this time i didn't get any emotional i might cry after this <laughs> i just say but i love y'all thank you so much for listening and um i'll see you guys in part three talk to you later